need to find this place or we'll be late. Make a left on Astrology Avenue. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant right. It should be right here or four, four, three way. Oh, turn, turn, turn. It looks like Renee. Yay, we're on time. The James and Kelly Show. Great, let's start the show. James. Hi, Cal. How are you? I'm great. How are you Pearl doing? Says hi, too. Hi, Pearl. Hi, Pearl. Hi, Pearl. Hi, Pearl. Oh, look at, oh my <laughs> gosh, what a beauty. Hi, beautiful this girl. Is... I hear you're busy at the park. Yes, that's what I do now. The dog park. <laughs> I get up at six every morning and go to go to bed seven at night because um, I've changed my routine because of my doggy. You know, you really have because I call you in the morning and you're busy. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. Go to your bed. Go to your bed. So everybody, Pearl will be here during the show, but she's been outside for a while, so she does sleep now. Go night night. Go bed. Well, she wants to know what the year is going to be like, James. Yeah, she's going to listen over here. I hope. Yeah. So let's go. Okay. How are you doing, Kelly? I'm really good. I, I did something really fun this weekend. I went to see the Van Gogh immersive. I got to experience oh, it. You know, oh, it only took uh, five years to come to Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else has moved on. I was out here in San Diego at the racetrack. Yes. It was so great. If you get an opportunity, seriously, everybody do it. It's so good. It was so much fun. Oh, that's great. Oh, great. I loved it. Well, should we say hi to some people? Hi, Lori. Yes. She says, comment. I'm so excited for the show. Thank you for all we do. Oh, you're so welcome. And Wendy and gosh, Linda. Hello. And Ruth and UP of MI, which is Minnesota, I guess, right? Upper Peninsula of Michigan. <laughs> wow, Kelly, you come a long way. <laughs> okay, only Very because correct. my little brother Theo is from there. <laughs> I know. Happy Hanukkah, everybody, as well. Happy Hanukkah. Oh my gosh. Hi, everybody. Hi, Lori. Hi, Dee Dee. Hi, Frank. <laughs> Hi, Marianne. Hello, Veronica. Kathy, Melinda, Bly. and everybody, once again, thank you very much for tuning in here and, and being part of our evenings on Monday and also for, um, you know, continuing to follow us. We really, really appreciate it. We do because of you guys. And uh, it's just information that we've been through in our lives to experience with you guys and to share it and to help you share it with someone else if it makes sense for you. Yeah, absolutely. We, really it, you know. we sure do. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And we have... Uh, Quite a lot of information, I think, to go through, James. Do. Well, why don't you start, Kelly? I no, no, no. I'm going to start, and then you just jump in. So okay. today is we're going to talk about the predictions of 2023. So I want to start with this, James. I had a really interesting dream this morning, and it kind of started. Uh, it's going to starts off like this all of a sudden, and this has never happened before. A pterodactyl appeared. Wow. A pterodactyl. Now, you know, I'm into totems, right? Yes. So I said, and you can, anybody can do this in their sleep. I said, what do you bring me? Like, what is this about? Because <laughs> I'd never seen a pterodactyl and I wasn't, had nothing. I had not been talking to, to anybody about dinosaurs or anything ancient like that. But he said, I bring you ancient wisdom. Wow. Isn't that great? And it's really going to help for this year for 2023 because it, it 2023 is a really um interesting year that we're gonna we're gonna go into now now if you remember 2022 if you remember i talked about uh it was all about duality i mean listen earth after all is planet earth is about duality yeah. but it had all those twos in it where you know like peace and war and love and hate and black and white and up and down that's all duality right now we're still going to face duality um and before I even go there, do you remember last year when I said the first six months were going to be easier than the second half? You did. Okay. Well, You're this right. year, this year it feels like every other month is going to be up and down. And I could actually call this year for reference, like a bipolar year. I mean, it sounds like a funny term to use, but it's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of emotions that come out this year that you're going to feel at times very much at peace. And then another month, you might feel like you really have a lot of work to do. So it's this is a really important year because it, in numerology, this is what we call a seven year, a seven and universal seven year. And so sevens represent 
and I've talked about this for a long time. If you are here during this period of time, not just this year, but during this period of time, you wanted to be here on earth because it grows our souls seven times more. So oh, there's wow. it. Wow. Yes. And that's why, you know, when people will say to me, you know, I really, you know, this earth is so tough, but you wanted to be here. I say this all the time because it grows us so much. Our souls have such large expansion during this time. If we allow it, of course, we have to allow it. But this is a seven year. So again, they're number seven. So what is seven as a year? Seven symbolizes a period of change and evolution. So it also means mystical. Sevens also bring independence and self-awareness. And anybody in numerology who is a seven, um, they often are like deeply introspective and philosophy. They have a lot of philosophy and they always have an interest in spirituality. So the number seven is also associated with the deeper meaning, like, and it has to do, it's connected with the planet K2. Now, you know, I'm going to be talking about Vedic astrology, everybody, because I feel very, um, that it's very accurate for prediction. So I use Vedic astrology and that's where the planets uh, move as opposed to them being fixed. Miss Carrie just said a joke. Can okay. I change my mind? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke. Uh, no, you want to be here during this, you know. So anyway, the number seven is um, is connected to K2 in Vedic astrology, which is the south node. And the south node or K2 is the shadow planet. So we're going to be looking at our shadow side a lot this year. And it's, I, I, that also mean looking at your past, like your childhood. And absolutely, James. And that, where you are today. Absolutely. We're going to be looking at everything because this year is the year where we will look at our at ourselves. We go really inward for ourselves, even though this world is going to be there's going to be some major happenings in the, this year. But we're still going to be looking at ourselves. Yes, you're going to be looking at your childhood. You'll be looking at your pains, your wounds. Um, you're going to be looking at everything this year. And this year, there's so much mysticism this year. It's you're going to find people that you would have never imagined that are become spiritual people that you just wouldn't have imagined, you know, some real hard asses out there. All of a sudden they have some spiritual experience. And I feel, James, that spirit guides have been given some sort of special compensation, if you will, to help people along this year. And wow. I think that we're going to be either seeing it or feeling it with angels, people are going to get, I don't know, more opportunities, you know, to make the right choice and to, and to do the right thing, to grow their soul, because this is such an important year. I think we're going to see this year attributes like um, personal attributes for people, like forgiveness. We're going to see more forgiveness this year. We're going to see more mercy this year, and we're going to see and feel more compassion. So this is kind of a theme for 2023. And seven is called the emotional healer. And so when we have this year, just remember that this is a year where a lot of healing can be done on yourself and for others. So just the energy of the vibration of the seven year can bring a lot of healing. Now, on the negative side, we're going to be looking at addictions. So people that have had addictions or people that you know, have, that have these, you know, they have to face their demons this year. This is why I feel that the spirit, our spirit guides and angels are going to be more present. They're always present, but maybe have a little more, I don't know, they can help interject with our, with our free will here. I, mm. I really feel that James. Hmm. Okay. Is that, uh, does that make any sense to what I'm saying here with yeah, you spirit just guides? I'm just writing stuff down. Okay. Right. <laughs> Just downloading some stuff. Oh, good, good. Okay. And this year also brings a lot of curiosity. Sevens have a lot of curiosity. So you're going to see that. Now, here's another thing. On January 22nd, we change signs in the Chinese New Year. So it's Chinese New Year. And this year is the year of the water rabbit. So there's always an animal and there's always an aspect that goes with it. Um, earth, air, and this one is water or fire. This year is water. It's the water rabbit. So if you were born in 1927, 1939, 
1951, 1963, now remember that year, 1975, 1987, 1999, 2011, or 2023, then you would be the year, you would be a rabbit. But the last occurrence for a water rabbit was 1963. Wow. So let's think about 1963 for a minute. There was, you know, there was an assassination with Kennedy. It was a, it's a big, that was a big year. There was a lot of civil unrest that year. So we can expect this year, a lot of civil unrest. And I think as people start doing healing on themselves, they're going to, you know, get really in touch with their anger, their rage, and really do something constructive with it. That's what I think. Um, so also, it's so funny too, James, in 1903, in 1903, we also had a water rabbit. I forgot this. And that was some of the first flights from the Wright brothers. So there's some amazing things that can happen in a water rabbit year. Okay. And it also, it can uh, make, it brings water rabbits in, and rabbits actually bring peace and success. Wow. So the year is going to want a lot of peace. You're, the, a theme for the year is going to be peace. And we're going to have to, uh, you know, really uh, expand our vision of what peace can be because it's going to be important. And I was, I was really thinking about this, especially with that pterodact pterodactyl dream this morning. Yeah. And what came to me in my meditation was, here is the question. And everybody write this question down because here's the question for 2023. Are you living your life like you will be attending Planet Earth School again? That's good. Are you living your life like you will be attending Planet Earth School again? And if so, what grade would you give yourself? Oh, good one. Because, uh, you know, James and I talk about do your best, do your best. This is a year where you're going to get a lot of opportunities. I feel like they're going to move heaven and earth to help you with whatever has um, stumped you on your growth. Okay. But again, I want you to look at it, you know, is am I going to be living here uh, again, like I'm going to come back again when you can actually graduate? <laughs> so you know, Kelly, I, I messaged you on the phone the other day, and you and, and thank you again for that movie Stutz S T U T Z. Great movie, right? Oh, did I tell Great you? documentary. No, go it, ahead. Let's talk about it. It's it, one of my favorite documentaries, it, Stutz. It, it, if you really haven't seen it, you need to see it. And I already got the books and everything. And there was a, a behavioral therapist. And he talked about tools for a living life, really. And one of the things I loved what he talked about was about the maze, getting caught in the freedom of uh, moving forward in life and being stuck in the maze. And I love that because a lot of people get stuck in victimhood or get stuck in the, in the past or, you know, don't feel loved by the people around them or don't see, aren't seen or whatever it might be. And so I was thinking about that. And I don't know if I, I told you, I'm not sure if I told you this part. I think on some level, um, and my friend Jeff, you know Jeff, we're talking mm -hmm. about this, that the soul is here to grow and expand and move and always moving, transforming and, li and live. But I feel like a lot of humans are stunted emotionally, that the emotions, they can't grow with the emotions, they want to control them or, or they don't understand it or they can't, and the emotions get stuck in the maze, the backwards, and the soul's trying to grow. And then there's that, that's like the conflict right there because they can't grow with it. And then during that conflict, that creates a um, dis-ease, disorder, imbalance, which finally will affect the physical body. Yes. So I think that there's something there. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So and the past and, and yeah. seeing what keeps you back. What, and what is the delusion that keeps you back or the distraction, I like to say, that keeps people back in the past. Yeah, I like that a lot. Because this is a year that you can make huge growth. Yeah. Everybody can. It's a really powerful year for that. And, and it's all about it's all about going inward and being honest with yourself. Yeah. I mean, you and you have to show up for yourself. This is a year that you've got to be present for yourself and for others. And, and it's what you said, just said, James, this is a year where people are not going to listen anymore to victim consciousness. Yeah. And, and, and really it is. If you, if you don't grow, if you don't want to grow, I get a feeling that you're going to regret it. And, especially, 
I feel that, again, I truly believe that the guides, angels are given some special compensation and like really take advantage of this year's energy. And the energy is about going inward, doing your work, healing, because ultimately we want to uh, earth to expand. We want earth to heal. And we all have to do that by healing ourselves first. This is an opportunity for that. Yeah, and I, I'm working on a meditation course in my school for next year. It's, become, it's really extensive. It's it's really becoming a, such a great course. I can't wait to share it with everybody. I'm filming it in January. And um, it's really, um, as I'm working on it, it's always a, a process and development. And it really hit me that one of the biggest themes I'm using is you must start looking at the world from the inside out. Not that's the outside. It. That's it. That's it, exactly. Not looking out there, but looking inside oh. to yourself. That's your meter. That's your, your tool to look at the world from the inside out, not the outside. Don't look at that trying to satisfy you. You have to satisfy inside first. So look at the Absolutely. inside out. How are you, what, what are you bringing to this earth in that situation or that person that you're in? That's what we've got to do this year. Yes. Very our perceptions, our perspective very differently from the inside out. Not the Absolutely. Outside. That's exactly what this is all about. This whole year is about that. Thank you for that. Yeah. And this year, we're going to see a lot of social revolution. And well, I'm going to explain well, why. Did you? Oh, my God. <laughs> and by the way, everybody, James and I did not talk about what we were going to no. talk about. No. Um, th there's going to be a major shift in energy patterns across the world. And that's a lot of that is going to be this up and down energy. But it doesn't well, matter because you I still have to go inward. And they discuss fusion and that sort of thing. I think there will be some technological in inventions, if you will, or ways of doing things. And, and and much faster ways and in different ways and it might sound very strange different ways of travel which sounds interesting but i think technology is going to change even more and um um oh and, wait do you see i i have all this okay you're absolutely right everything I, you're saying I, wrote, I, I said this last about last year but it, it didn't i don't i don't think it came about but it will this year where boundaries of certain countries are changed you did say that and it's that a, comes up this time because there'll be a lot of wars between countries. That's what I just, I got a lot that. of change in leaderships. Yeah, yeah, this is this is quite a year. I mean, I would love to say, oh, this is the easiest year. I, I just can't say that these days. It doesn't make any sense. I've ever had in my life. The hardest years, right? I mean, the yeah. most difficult. The temperature has been the weirdest in my life. That's because, right. Didn't you tell me recently in yeah. San Diego it was what? It was 43 degrees in the morning. Because I got up every morning at six, and uh, about eleven o'clock, it was about seventy. That's <laughs> so, see, I'd be so thrilled if we had the seventy here. <laughs> it's it's warm for us at forty-three. You know, like today is like nineteen or something ridiculous. But I know it's unbelievable. Okay, so um, the whole year is about people moving closer to spirituality and understanding. I was in a home and just asked, "Will next? Will next year help with grief and starting life again?" Um, you have to start living. It's, yeah. it's, again, here talking about the outside in. What right. are you going to do to make your grief go? Away? I mean, what? Yes, because we're giving, we're telling everybody this is what you need to do. I mean, I, I just can't do the work for you, but this is what you need to do. Everybody needs to start really paying attention to the things that have blocked them in life. So let's talk about this first, James. So I want to talk about Mercury retrograde. So here's where everything kind of starts off. So this year, believe it or not, we will have had four Mercury retrogrades. That's a lot. Normally we have three. Yes, Who notices anymore? Well, I, exactly. I'm going to tell you why you didn't notice it so much in 2022 is because they were all in earth signs oh. and earth well although the finance finance was huge right the financial situation this year was huge uh but this mercury retrograde that's coming up it begins on so so bizarre it begins on december 27th so that alone is odd because we are ending a year with mercury retrograde okay which is mercury retrograde think of it as um you're redoing this, you're reanalyzing, you're rethinking, but we are ending a year with Mercury retrograde and then starting a year with Mercury retrograde. So we're going to bring everything from this year. We're going to bring it. Imagine like this, you know, this car, you've got all this junk and you're carrying it into the next year. That's what we're doing with this year. And that's how the year starts. And it's kind of fascinating because on December 27th, 
Mercury retrogrades, and I'm talking about in Vedic astrology, everybody, that's what I practice, at zero degrees of Capricorn. So what does that mean? Zero degrees is a, is a critical degree, critical. It means pure energy, pure energy of Capricorn. So December 27th, if you are traveling to this last week, which I will be, this is a powerful hard, difficult traveling time. I'll say it like this. It's going to be very kind of chaotic because on December 28th, the very next day, the very next day, Mercury retrograde changes signs, James, from Capricorn into Sagittarius. Oh, wow. I mean, and then everything from that, every Mercury retrograde, there'll be four of them in 2023 also, Everyone is in a fire sign. So you will be feeling it, James. You'll know it this time. And there's going to be like a wobble for traveling this and for communications. There'll be a there'll lot be of things are going to be difficult. There'll be a lot of, well, because of the weather as well, but delays because Mercury and Sagittarius, Sagittarius is about travel. So delays yes. travel. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's, um, it's going to be, uh, you're going to feel this Mercury retrograde like there's an urgency here because, again, it's in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is all about speaking the truth. It's about, it can be explosive. It's about inspiration. I will say that. It's definitely about inspiration. I, I, my insight, but I got well, insight, but, I, but when you were talking about, you know, you carry the junk from this year into next year, mm -hmm. I was imagining having like a big old truck or an old car. Or, you know, Trump, uh, like a, a bus. A Some bus. people have a bus bringing it along. I have to bring yeah. it this year, but then we find that Capricorn, so we find a storage place and we order that. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And you would do that, place. right? I like that. And I just purged my house, I threw out a lot of a lot of things here. So you're already ahead of the game for it, then. yeah. I put out, I'm, I'm actually getting which is really strange, but I'm, I'm relieving myself of books which is a very weird thing for me because I love my books, but you, you'll get some more. Don't worry. Oh, well, some more. I can't wait. That's <laughs> a very classical book. And, uh, you had some great books. I think you yeah. gave me uh, three cases. Um, <laughs> I did. I yeah. Really? All the Kellys got them. Yeah. All the Kellys. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love. Okay. So again, we're going to end the year with Mercury retrograde and begin the year with Mercury retrograde. It's like, oh dear. So it's, there's some energy about that that makes it a little heavy. And on January 6th, again, why does that name, that number sound familiar, that date? You know, we just had a big thing in 2021 with January 6th. Well, January 6th, this January 6th is a full moon in Gemini. Again, I'm talking Vedic astrology in Gemini and the sun is in Sagittarius. And that brings out a lot of hidden agendas. So that's going to be an interesting full moon and interesting things that can come up from that. Very interesting. I wrote, I wrote that down. Very wrote that down. And especially it's a lot of has to do with foreign countries. So I, that's going to be pretty interesting. I, I, I wrote I wrote down, find hidden truths about governments. Oh, there you go. There you go. And also yeah. CEOs, CFOs, like major companies. Yeah. They're, they're going to be all revealed, like certain secrets, certain things they did with money or ways they've done things which are immoral yeah. um, with, with companies and people's finances. I think there's going to be a lot of that come this year. I, I agree with that. Absolutely. I think that more wars. See yeah. That. Well, yeah. Well, here's now let's get into Mars. So now we're talking about Mars is currently retrograde. And again, Vedic astrology, it's in Taurus. So when planets are retrograde, it gives us an opportunity, as we know, to reflect and to review and to reassess. Well, when Mars is in retrograde, I mean, Mars deals with energy, passion, anger, weapons and war. So this is this month of January, because this very difficult retrograde of Mars in retrograde has been in retrograde since October, James, and it continues until January 14th. But the effects of this are going to run until at least March 15th. I mean, this is a, a very intense time period because Mars deals again with fire and weapons and it's high energy. And uh, then it moves uh, actually into Gemini on May 10th. And during that period of time, and I'm not going to, I'm not skipping over. I'm going to go each major planet. I thought that would be easier. But when we get to May, Mars crosses over four planets, including Jupiter, Venus, and the sun, all in Gemini. And that brings what can be in May, some pretty violent uprisings in the United States, like some mass hostility concerning injustices worldwide. So we're going to be looking at um, 
deep healing all of our old past and the world's going to be looking at that stories. <laughs> oh, okay. You brought that, already brought that? Yeah. Wow. So yeah. you can see January is intense. I mean, we're as we go start with Mercury retrograde and then we go into Mars. And now I'm going to talk about Saturn. So Saturn, his karma, its work, its health, its government, and Saturn actually moves from Capricorn after two and a half years, two and a half years in Capricorn. So if we talk about 2020 and, and the COVID virus, that was all with Saturn and Capricorn. That all had everything to do with that. And it's and Saturn only changes every two and a half years. Well, guess wow. what? January 17th, it's moving into Aquarius. Now, oh, Saturn. That's, that's why I'm getting new medical technology. That's exactly why, exactly, James, why, why you said that. Absolutely. Well, Saturn, the ancient ruler of Aquarius is Saturn. Now, we know it as Uranus right now, the modern ruler of Aquarius, but Saturn is actually the ancient ruler. So how, and I said earlier, ancient wisdom. Remember me saying that? Yeah. So here we go. I mean, I feel that there's going to be a whole um, with Aquarius that it's going to resist and break free from the Saturn, you know, the ways that we have done things. You know, I think that Capricorn really kept, uh, you know, things at a certain space. It was trying to keep hold back things. Well, Aquarius, they Aquarians, they don't hold back. They break through things. So this is going to bring a two and a half year period of a consciousness shift. And again, we're going to see tools that help with this. And as you just said, James, I feel that it's going to bring technology because Aquarius, Saturn and Aquarius. To deal with the skeletal system and the blood system. I love that. Yes. And it's going to bring um, humanitarian efforts. It's yeah. going to bring new opportunities, new modalities in healing. It also is going to have huge shifts and huge help and huge opportunities in mental illness. Interesting. And I feel that that is going to be so important here. Um, well, it, it, it's interesting because I wrote down um, some something to do with new foundations or prisons, like changing the prison systems in some way. and has to do with mental health. That's what I wrote down. Oh, my gosh. Well, then you're right there with this. This is exactly right. Because there's going to be in the next... This year, in the next two and a half years, we're going to see a lot of change. And again, everybody, this still means everybody needs to go in and do their own work, but on the, and that's inward individually, but on out in the world, we're going to see huge shifts in, in discoveries of ways to heal here. And then if we talk about Neptune, this is very interesting. Neptune is the dreamy planet. Well, in Vedic astrology, it enters Pisces on February 18th. And it stays until June of 2035. Wow. That's a long time. Okay. So guess when the last time this happened, where we saw Neptune in Pisces, the last time this happened was 1858 to 1872. Civil so, War. Civil War, social unrest. And guess what else, James? The spiritual movement. Yeah. Spiritualism. Spiritualism. And when Neptune enters Pisces, it also brings with it floods, hurricanes, tornadoes. Wow. This is I, I wrote down, um, it's very interesting, uh, different ways of water uh, moving. So it could be glaciers, yeah. it could be floods, different ways of water moving. Oh, that's interesting. Yes, it will Idle, be. It will waves, be. typhoons, different. It was funny how it came in, different ways of water moving. I think, and I have it in one of my notes here, during this period of time, also, there was a tsunami. Mm -hmm. Remember the big tsunami uh, that was, what, 2004 yeah. or something? It was hit at about this degree. Wow. So that you're absolutely right with that. Okay. Um, I think during that time also, Kelly, with that Pisces, there'll be more openings of the awareness of other life forms. We call them UFOs. And more acceptance uh, because they're going to be forced to. Well, I've been talking about that for I don't know how long. <laughs> Good. Yeah, there are going to be a lot more of um, uh, assassinations. 
I, there's yes, when we you'll see, I agree with that because we're going to hit um, a place. Well, when I get to Jupiter, we're going to talk about that because okay. that does bring a lot of change here with this. Okay. But as far as Neptune entering Pisces, it's going to open up so much. Aquarius is always curious about astrology. It's it's about astrology. It's always curious, right? And Pisces is about spirituality. So this period of time, I think we're going to see. Again, people that you would have never imagined all of a sudden taking a spiritual approach, like ever would have imagined. But somehow something happens, spirit shows them a message, and they kind of have no other choice but have to take a different path. Something happens here with everybody this year. It's quite a year. So when we get to Uranus, Uranus goes direct on January 22nd. Now, isn't this interesting? That's still the same day in Chinese New Year of the Year of the Water Rabbit. So you can imagine Uranus, and it goes at 21 degrees, which is a really powerful degree. It goes into Aries. Now, when I say it goes direct, and we're talking about Uranus, it brings, and it's an Aries, Aries is leadership, and Uranus is surprise and change. So it's what you just said, James. I feel that we're going to have a lot of change in leadership for um, this yeah. whole year. There's going to be changes in the Catholic Church, and there's going to be Supreme Court change. Something's going to happen violently in the Supreme Court. Not just going to be killed or not. And I also think, like like Pelosi's husband was almost killed. There's going to be a lot more of that attempting going on. Uh, people, that's what I pick up. But definitely, I think the Catholic Church is going to change in some way. And also, I think the um, Roe versus Wade, the abortion question, will come up, and there'll be changes made with that again. I and so. I, I definitely believe it will be. And um, yeah, keep on going, Kelly. I'll just yeah, on. no, I I love this. Change of I, government, I, got, I wrote down. And a lot of change in religion too, James, is what yeah. you just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, then when we get to Pluto, now Pluto, again, in Vedic astrology, it's in Capricorn for, I think, until next year or, or two years from now. And that brings Pluto in Capricorn, it brings financial revolution so oh. and money and corruption and wars between countries because pluto is this hidden thing this hidden thing and i know so many people have asked about um finances here with uh regards to this year i feel that we're going to it's going to be kind of rough uh in the next few months and then it picks up financially it picks up and get does better maybe may june i i, I just get it I'll go, I'll go along with that i get a sense that um, again, that we're going to find out, however this shows itself, that financial institutions have been hiding money and or spending our money in some way. Like that guy that just was arrested for the Bitcoin thing. Yeah. So we're going to find big institutions did something with people's money and government's money. They, they did something with money, the hidden money, and it's not right. <laughs> so we're going to find yeah. it out. I also think there's going to be a change in how um, transactions occur. I think there will be less use of paper, if you will, more cards or another way of, of doing it. Saturn and Aquarius, you bet. It's going to happen. Yeah, that makes so much sense here. Yeah. And then we get to Jupiter. So Jupiter is the largest planet. We always want to look where Jupiter is and where Saturn is. Well, where all the planets are, but those two in particular, because uh, Jupiter is in Pisces until April 21st of this year. And it stays in a sign for one year. At 12 years ago, on March 11th in 2011, was the worst earthquake in history in Japan. And that was when uh, Jupiter was in Pisces. So we're still looking at some major events with Jupiter, uh, with the world, uh, things on Earth that can happen. Because then it goes into Aries, and Aries, in Jupiter and Aries, is all about, and this is on April 22nd, uh, it begins with new beginnings. It's a fighting spirit, unexpected events, new awakenings, aggression. Yeah. So, and that, and then here's where it gets a little complicated. Approximately April 22nd to approximately the end of October of 2023. So April, May, June, July, October, there's a conjunction of Jupiter and Rahu. And those two planets are together. And that brings natural calamities, earthquakes, floods, big storms. Um, and again, with all of these Mercury retrogrades in fire signs, it brings a lot of fire to the planet. A lot of fires are going to happen this year. This is a big, a big year. 
actually. It's a huge year. Is that June, you said? That will be from about April 22nd mm -hmm. uh, until uh, through October of 2023. Right. Yeah. So. Um, California. You know what, James? We, when I was lived there, I mean, we always said that there were earthquakes in uh, February and October. January, February, and October were like earthquake months. Yeah, but you were at fires here all the time. The the fire, oh, please. How many times did I evacuate? Oh, I know. Oh, I know, honey. So um, let's see. So let's talk about the economy. From January 17th to April 21st. So again, these first four months, basically here, Jupiter and Saturn are right next to each other. And that makes the economy not so well. It, it, it's not the best time for the economy at all. But I do feel that from after May, um, actually from about April 21st until May of 2024, so another, about another year, Jupiter and Saturn, the economy improves. And I think we're going to see a lot of more growth next year. Not so much this year. I don't, I don't feel that this year we're going to see that much. But um, now let's talk about some eclipses because, you know, I'm all eclipses. I'm all about the eclipses and they bring so much change. The first eclipse is April 20th. So again, these every other month, there seems to be something big that occurs here. April 20th, we have a solar eclipse and it's at six degrees of Aries. And that brings new beginnings. It brings a lot of people that had been thinking about he being a healer. It brings that up and out because Aries is, has a lot of passion to it, a lot of energy. And um, when it's like this, it bring, they call this aspect the healers to the gods. So if you are thinking about it making big changes in your life or getting healing in your life, that eclipse, April 20th, brings a lot of healers out in the world and healing for, for one another and healing for yourself. So it's really important. That's a, a huge eclipse there. Um, and what happens with that eclipse is Mars is the planet that rules that uh, eclipse because it's in Aries. And that determines so much. It makes it more potent. It makes it um, a lot of, uh, it's, it's just a very powerful eclipse. Uh, you want to talk about change with people that will kind of just force a change onto people. Yeah. That will be a big one. So let's see. Um, Kelly, oh, Kelly's, yes. if, yeah, Kelly's in her finest moment right now. She's a Virgo. <laughs> Kelly information in Virgo. So she's yeah. in heaven right now. So I'm letting Kelly run with it. <laughs> Not that I was going to remember any of this, but. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. Over the holiday, over the, because I'm going to take a couple of weeks off, I will write it all up and we'll post it so people can, you know, it's too much. I mean, for me to. Like my head is. There's, Right. You're, I don't want anybody's head to explode. Um, <laughs> and skipping ahead, on October 14th, we also have another total solar eclipse. And this would be, at, and again, in Vedic astrology, at 27 degrees of Virgo and zero degrees of Rahu it, it, uh, in Libra. It's very intense, that solar eclipse on October 14th. It brings attacks. It brings uh, sudden upsets with justice. It could bring... You know, this virus, we need to talk about this virus, James. It's, I feel that it's, uh, you know, it's still here. It's not going anywhere, this virus. Yeah. And um, I feel that it's, I don't know, more offshoots of it, I suspect. Uh, I was picking up a different virus. Tell me, oh, 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 is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, I do believe that. I also believe there's going to be major security risks. On a, new, on a whole different level, whether it's for, um, hacking computers or credit cards, it's going to be big level like banks, and it's going to be big stuff going on with risks, you know, uh, security. Yeah. Right oh boy, I can imagine that. Um, gosh, well, and our North and South node, and I, we call it in Vedic astrology the Rahu and K2, they actually switch, and they switch every year and a half, and it's going from Aries and Libra into Virgo, Pisces and Virgo. So with Pisces and Virgo, you get a lot of hurricanes and tornadoes. So again, there's going to be a lot of world uh, things that happen uh, with regards to earth changes. Nancy Ross says, my hand is getting tired. I know mine too. I'm exhausted. Oh, I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, 
And the last thing, well, a couple of last things I want to say. Venus retrograde will go ve retrograde on July 23rd, and that goes until September 2nd. And it's in Leo, and that can bring back old relationships. So a lot of people ask me, you know, if, when is a good time to have, if they're going to have some work done, not during that time, not during Venus retrograde, uh, July 23rd to September 2nd, not a good time for that. So, and then uh, Jupiter goes retrograde September 4th again. And that again brings a lot of attention to um, yourself, to the world, and what you want to changes that you want to make. So the pivotal months this this year coming up, I would say January would be huge. I would say March and April, very big. I'm gonna say August, very big, September, October, and November. So a lot of um a lot of things that can happen during those periods of times. I just thought about something. I just thought we should have had like a little shots of like tequila or vodka <laughs> the time you said something. Not like any <laughs> horrendous news. Take a <laughs> shot. Be drunk right now. <laughs> Pulling over. It's so, an awful lot. <laughs> just generally speaking now, yeah. what is the best month for doing operations, surgeries, things like that? Like Oh, I would say, and best time for May and June are really good. May and June are great for travel, by the way. May through September is what I was mm -hmm. for, for, for surgeries. Yeah, I would probably, you know, listen, if you're going to have a surgery, look what happened to me. You know, I mean, you, you just have them when you need to have them. But a better month would be, the I would, yeah, May or June would be really good. Um, I, I just want to say to everybody, you've heard a lot of this and I, we heard a lot of it and, and their heads are exploding, but the, <laughs> the major part of it is really, which I'm getting Kelly is really forcing yourself to go inside and doing yes. your inside work because you can have the whole world around you falling apart, but you yourself can be okay. Yes. Because it's not affecting you. And that's the whole lesson of planet earth. Yeah, it's true. That's you, it. It really is doing doing the work, doing the work it came before. And I, you know, I'm working on this meditation course, and it really does. It, it the theme of it is going, looking at the world from the inside out. That's the perfect outside. for this because it's right. here. It's how you perceive it, your perception. So a lot of it's going to fall down around you, but you're still here. You're still alive. It is, you know, you're still going. Yes. So just be aware of the observer of things going on. Doesn't yeah. mean you're going to tumble and fall, but just observe these changes are happening. And many times push people into another way of thinking to change their paradigms. And that's why these things happen. And don't be afraid to go inward. So many people no. are just so afraid of they, their pain or their suffering, or they're afraid that this, if they look at this, it's just yeah. the opposite. You really need to go yeah. inward. It's sometimes to deal with the, the thing, the, the number one way of, I've said this before uh, of healing is, you know, first of all, you've got to look at it. It's got to got this thing that bubble to the surface to be looked at to in order to be healed. You don't want to put any of that stuff down inside you because it'll come out in ugly ways and different ways. So, yeah, it will. It will absolutely come out. People need this. Yeah, it's true. They need this. Um, <laughs> I know I gave a lot of information here. You gave a lot of information um, and I, this is something that, that Vicki uh, Nason was talking about with signs. As you were speaking, Kelly, I wrote mm -hmm. that also um, after that UFO thing. There's going to be a lot of signs for people to see and be aware of if they are inside and in the, their cells looking from the inside out. You'll be able to look around and see signs and know what those signs mean. Not only totems, but different types of signs. You'll immediately right. get what that means. Like, so I feel. And signs from your loved ones. Yeah. And if you do the work, they'll help you. <laughs> I mean, right. Right. You work, you're expanding yourself to be connected with those realms that are around you. Right. So why would we stay inside here and not outside the box? Right. It's so true. It's so true, James. Because um, <laughs> everybody does need to do their work. I mean, again, I feel like this year people are going to get more opportunities and I would take the opportunities. All of a sudden you hear about a therapist or you hear about a class you want to take or you, you, um, start to learn about, I don't know, something that gets your attention. And then and that provokes you to start thinking about taking care of yourself. There'll be a lot of physical healing this year, James, too. So this is a great year to go in for dietary changes or health related things, looking at inflammation or any of that. A lot of medical technology changes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a great one. I, this is from Joe Sunderledge. Why are so many people falling off cruise ships? Oh, 
Oh, James, I hope that doesn't happen with us. Huh? <laughs> yeah, August. Uh, August, we're going to Alaska, everyone. If you want to That's join right. Us. Please join us. Yes. Um, I don't know why. I, I don't know why so many people are jumping. I'll tell you, uh, drugs, alcohol. I, I think that's it. Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty slippery slope to get up there and you're like, whoa, boom. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's. <laughs> and Margaret says, funny story. I thought angels were ringing a bell in my house three times. And I was like, wow, angels. And then I realized I hung a Christmas bell in my kitchen. <laughs> On the cap that I was hitting it with my leg. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Oh um, my gosh. Um, as a therapist, yes, you're looking forward to all the different, yes, the, yes, the changes in mental health. You know what I think we also, people are going to be looking at, James, are things, like other ways of treatment, like a lot of people have talked to me about like um, mushroom healing or uh, those different types of, I don't just mean ayahuasca, natural. but those kind natural. of modalities, natural. natural. Natural no. remedy. I think no. we're going to see, you know, change of regulations. Like I said, that's going to be that's yeah. going to affect that as well because um, so many people are in prison for for nothing. We find out marijuana or for it's going to be big changes going. On. I know Biden's trying to get that done, but I think there's going to be some changes that are, are going to be done. Mm -hmm. Who's going to win the election in 2024? Do you think? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. think uh, the two that we candidates currently are even going to be in the running. I don't either. I think we have all new people that are going to be coming in here. All right, everybody, take care. Thank Have a everyone. great holiday. Bye. Bye. Bye now. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. That was great. Maybe we changed some lives. And maybe opened up some minds. Which way do I turn? Uh, right. Uh, I, I mean left. Yeah.